I move to next. What is yes? Now I want to explain exactly what is a design thinking process, which is a user-centered approach. So design thinking is a human-centered approach. Why it is called as human-centered approach? Because it started from user needs, ideation process, and understanding the problem, and make the prototype, and finally you collect the feedback. Likewise, your uh, process is going on. So that design thinking process is called as a human-centered approach to solve the problem, which helps us create solutions that are not only innovative, but also desirable and feasible. In previous slide, I presented about what is desirability, what is feasibility, likewise I propose, so you may now aware about, aware, aware about what is desirable and feasible. So it is an iterative process, meaning we can revisit and refine each stage as needed. This presentation, according this presentation, we'll explore the five key steps of the design thinking process, which are empathize, define, diverge, converge, and communicate. By, by following these steps, we can ensure that our designs are truly user-centered and address uh, the needs of the people we are designing for. So now we can move to important session, which is called as uh, design thinking process as a user-centered approach. The first step is empathize. In empathize, we may understand your user. So you may collect the information about the user needs, what their wants, what are their pain points, what are all their frustrations. You may collect the information from them. They may be a farmer, they may be an industrial person, they may be an industrial product developer, they may be a researcher. You may collect their problem as a user need. And, uh, how do I collect the user needs? Yes, by conducting the user interviews. Based on the user interviews, you may observe their problem. Yesterday I told you about what is uh, observation, what is listening, what is dialogue, what is reading. So now you may aware about these things and you conduct surveys. And finally, you may develop empathy for the user's experience. The, so the first step in the design thinking process is to empathize. This involves gaining the deep understanding of the users we are designing for. We can achieve this through various methods, such as conducting user interviews, where we ask open-ended questions to understand user needs and the pain points. We can also observe users in their natural environment to see how they interact with the existing products or services. Additionally, surveys can be used to, to gather broader insights from a larger pool of users. By employing these techniques, we can develop empathy for the user's experience and identify the challenges they face. Automatically, we can move to second step, which means define. Yesterday, I talked about how do you, how do you understand your problem? Yes, in the after understanding your problem, frame the problem statement. Yes, how might be the statement yesterday I told you? So, frame the problem statement based on the user research by utilizing how might we frame formula. After writing the problem statement, you clearly define the core challenges and our opportunity available for solving that problem. So focus on user needs and avoid solution based thinking. You don't give a solution at a early stage. So you may wait for ideation session and the brainstorming session. You may develop the prototype. After that, collecting the feedback from the your developed feedback. Likewise, you consolidate the data. So in the defined stage, we take the insights gathered during the empathize stage and use them to redefine the problem we are trying to solve. This involves creating a clear and concise problem statement that captures the core challenge or opportunity we have identified. It is important to focus on user needs in the problem statement and avoid jumping straight to solutions. So you don't tell the solutions as direct manner. An effective problem statement will guide the design process by ensuring that we are working towards a solution that truly addresses needs of the users. And then we move to third step, which is diverge. In diverge stage, is all about brainstorming and generating a wide range of solutions to problem we define. This is a time to encourage creativity and explore all possibility without the judgment through mind map mapping, sketching, and interview role playing can be used to break down barriers and spark innovative ideas. The goal is to come up with a diverse set of solutions 
that address a problem statement in the different ways. So you allow the time to students, they give the different solutions because every student has the uh, different perspective. So you, you may consider all the uh, solutions in the brainstorming session. Then convert. How do you convert? It? Find yes. Evaluate and refine the brainstormed solutions. Select the most promising ideas based on feasibility and desirability. In the converge stage, we take the reverse ideas generated in the diverse stage and begin to refine and evaluate them. This involves analyzing each solution based on its potential to address the problem statement. What we wrote with the how might be problem statement. We can use techniques like voting, or matrix analysis to prioritize the most promising solutions. The goal of the converge stage is to narrow down the options and identify the solutions that has the greatest potential for success. And then finally, we move to communicate. What I, in today's presentation, is started with the pitch workshop. So the communication is also important. So effectively communicate the chosen design through the storytelling process and they communicated to their targeted audience as like stakeholders, clients or users. These are all the important things available with the communicate session. I conclude this session with the, the design thinking a powerful and iterative process. User-centered solutions lead to success and continuously refine and improve your design thinking skills through these 